A strong testing regime plays a key role in slowing the spread of COVID-19. But getting tested can be a major challenge. And then waiting for the results. The sample has to get to the lab and back. That can take up to four days. That is much too long to stop a pandemic. Several nations are developing rapid tests that turn out results within minutes. But experts are concerned about their accuracy. Well, no one wants to be ushered into a false sense of security, thinking they haven't got the coronavirus but are spreading it. And it's a pain to think you do have it when you don't and go to all the trouble of total quarantine. That's why these new rapid tests could be a blessing. But could they also be a curse? As a journalist, I meet quite a lot of people, and some of them may be corona positive. So today, I want to try out the new antigen test. Hello. Hi there. Ich würde gern I would like to buy an antigen test. I'm afraid I can't sell you the test. As things stand, it can only be given out to medical staff, so you don't qualify. You can't test yourself, you'll simply have to go to the doctors. After this initial setback, I find a doctor who's willing to let me do the test myself, not the standard procedure, yet. This is the packet containing the antigen quick test. I only got it a week ago, so I had to read the instructions too. There's also a small sterile swab here. If you can't put your tongue down far enough, you can use a stick to help. Okay. Not that easy, but for me, definitely doable. Have you done both sides? Yes, left and right. Afterwards, the swab goes into a liquid, which is then dripped onto the test. One line means negative, two means positive. It's pretty clear the test is showing a negative result. Sibylle Katzenstein thinks everyone should have a test like this at home. It would be great for a mum, for example, whose child wakes up feeling sniffly, but she isn't sure and is wondering whether she can take the child to school and go to work herself. If patients had access to a simple test they could do at home, that would ease the pressure on doctors and laboratories. And it would help a lot of people to decide what to do. But critics say the test is not sufficiently reliable. Here's how laboratory and antigen tests compare. When a person gets infected with COVID-19, the virus load in the body starts off low, increasing rapidly in the first days and then decreasing as time passes. A regular lab test can detect the virus early on, but very little virus load. The antigen test can only detect the virus later, when the load is higher. So does that mean I could actually still be positive, despite having a negative result? I ask a lab expert. If the viral load in the throat is not high enough to be detectable by the test, that might result in a false negative. And it's the same if the swab is not done properly. The antigen test is a cheap and fast way of testing a lot of people. But the test is less sensitive than others and can't completely rule out an infection. Antigen tests can't replace lab tests, but they can be a great help in the fight against COVID-19. Martin Burke has been helping develop an antigen-based test at the University of Illinois. He says it allows for fast and frequent testing on a large scale and is safe. First of all, how does it work? Thanks. Yes. To clarify, the test that we're currently using is a PCR-based test, a saliva test at the University of Illinois that was developed to skip RNA isolation. So it's fast and scalable. Results are within hours. Uh, and I think it's important to point out this is different than the antigen test. Uh, we're uh -huh. working on antigen tests here. We have not rolled those out yet in the laboratory. Um, is it also completely different to an antibody test, which would only tell you if you've had an infection, uh, not if you're actually infectious? Correct. Our test is looking for the virus in your saliva. So we look for three genes from the virus. Uh, it's a quick direct from saliva to PCR assay. Uh, so it allows us to detect whether the, to tell you the number of copies per milliliter of the virus in your saliva. 
what makes it safe? So the key is that the level of detection is very low. So we pick up 500 to 1,000 copies per mil. We've been now testing about 50,000 people uh, twice per week over the course of the last several months. More than half a million tests have been performed. And what we see is that people go from negative, 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 and then when they flip positive, we can see it at very low viral loads. So we think we can catch people before they infect others. So, so it sounds extremely accurate or, or precise. How, how accurate would you say it is? Yeah, it's very accurate. We're looking at three genes at the same time. And for the positive tests, we go ahead and repeat them very quickly just to make sure. So we believe we have a very high level of accuracy, both for positives and negatives, which is critical when applying on scale. With 50,000 people, we can't have a lot of false positives or false negatives. Otherwise, it's very difficult to make the system work. Exactly, because false negatives are what will implode any testing system. And, and we've already seen examples in countries where they've stocked up on these rapid uh, test sets, but they've been uh, antibody-based tests, and uh, that's basically backfired on them. Well, I think what we need to learn to do is figure out how to use each type of test in the right setting. Right, so this is a very challenging problem and we have to figure out the best way to use different tests in different situations to maximize protection against spread in a community. Uh, we think now that we have a system working with the saliva-based test, comparing that test directly to these new antigen tests head-to-head uh, -head would be a really good way to find out whether they could provide the same level of protection of the test that we're using. Martin, I guess the, the question everyone's going to be asking themselves is, is this going to be a game changer? I hope so. And I think we need to figure out how to use the antigen tests so that we are not giving ourselves a false sense of security. I think we have to understand the limitations. Every test has limitations. And we just need to, I think, better understand when is the right time to use which test and to understand the limitations so that we don't give ourselves a false sense of confidence. The one thing I would just say, no matter what test we're using, we have to wear masks and social distance. No and test will allow us to stop doing that, and that's really important. And the limitations in this case, are that you need actual trained personnel to conduct these tests. These aren't tests that one could do just at home. Correct. Our test is done in a laboratory. Now, the saliva collection is done in tents. You can just walk through in five minutes and dribble saliva into a tube. But then the rest of it is done absolutely in a, in a laboratory setting. Um, you, you mentioned this won't be the only solution in fighting off the coronavirus. Is it going to take other types of tests uh, and other approaches uh, to see that we do battle this, uh, battle off this or fight off this pandemic? Absolutely. I think we need all hands on deck and we need to continue to innovate and find new ways to detect the virus. Obviously, we need a safe and very effective vaccine. We continue to need better and better treatments to make sure that people who get sick don't actually die or have long term sequelae in the hospital. Uh, and we all need to continue to do our part. Obviously, it's an ext extraordinary challenging time. We need to hang in there and continue to be safe and make smart choices about how we socialize and wear masks and social distance. It works and we need to keep those vigilant in place. And before I let you go, what sort of time scale are you or timeline are you looking at? Because we are now heading into winter in the Northern Hemisphere. It's uh, going to be a very challenging time, I expect. Absolutely. So we are in this for the long haul. At the University of Illinois, as I mentioned, uh, we've now performed half a million tests over the last several months. Our daily positivity rate is 0.24%. And, but we are not letting our guard down. So we figure we're in this probably for a couple years. And I think we all need to just kind of adapt to the new normal where we do very safe, thoughtful things to help us get back to thriving as a, as a society and as our economies need to you know, thrive as well. So it's just really important that we, of course, think holistically. That's my most important message. It's got to be a holistic approach, I think, in order for this to work. Excellent. Martin Berg, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. Derek Williams, turn to take the reins. Our science correspondent has been busy looking into your questions about the pandemic. What's dangerous is the pneumonia. Why not find a cure or treatment for the pneumonia instead of the virus? Pneumonia is a blanket term that's generally defined as a more or less serious inflammation of tissue in, in your air passages 
and or your lungs. Um, it, it can be caused by a number of different pathogens, both, both viral and bacterial. Um, the pneumonia that COVID-19 can cause is generally initiated by the virus and, and can't be treated, for example, uh, with antibiotics, which, which only kill bacteria. Um, when they're infected with SARS-CoV-2, the cells in the small sacs in your lungs, where, where gas exchange occurs, what are called um, the alveoli, uh, begin to die and, and clog the lungs up. And, and that can eventually lead to what's called um, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, as the pneumonia progresses, the situation can be exacerbated by the immune system, uh, causing massive inflammation, which is, which is supposed to help get the infection under control, but which can actually make things worse. So, so treating or curing coronavirus pneumonia means either um, addressing the problem at its root, which is the SARS-CoV-2 infection itself, or somehow toning down the body's immune response to it when it goes over the top. And now to the latest data from over 200 countries, which show new cases doubling in 26 nations and increasing in another 83 countries. They've stayed at the same level in 10 countries, 71 nations have seen their new positive COVID-19 cases fall, another 11 halving. And eight countries have reported no new cases for four weeks in a row. Here's the bar graph showing the statistics of the last weeks. The fight against corona is over when that whole chart turns blue. That's going to take a while. <laughs> 